What's good, people? We're back. Well, I say we're back. I'm back. Back with a stream before the massive game tonight. So I thought I'd do a bit of a chat with you guys. Not going to be here for long, but do me a favor. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe. Really important that we do that. Two things that you can help me out with that are going to be absolutely free and not cost you a penny. So make sure you hit the like button and then hit subscribe. We're trying to get up to 20K, which is the next target. We're very, very slowly but surely getting there. So please make sure that you're a part of that community by hitting like and then subscribe. If you do want to click the link in the pinned comments or in the description to Surfshark VPN, then of course we are doing that as well. So please make sure that you click on that and sort yourself out um, with a chance to get yourself a VPN because that's all needed now when you're going away on broad and stuff like that. So make sure that you're involved in that Surfshark VPN. Very hard to say, isn't it? Surfshark VPN. Very difficult to say, but uh, make sure you click on the link and get yourself sorted. Massive game this evening. We are going to be talking about it. We're also going to mention Man City and Real Madrid because, of course, we're going to have one eye on that just in case we do um, go through. But let's be real. Most of our concentration will be fully focused on our game against Bayern Munich, which is going to be tough at the Allianz Arena. We're going to talk about the team news. We're going to talk about what you believe in the chat would be the best starting 11. I'm going to give you mine. I'm going to talk about how I think we can beat Bayern Munich tonight and how we will have to put in which will be one of the best performances of the season if we're going to have to do it. So let's pray and hope that we are going to be focused on that and forget what happened at the weekend. Um, if you have any questions for me, please do put them in. Super chats, of course, are welcome, but not a must, but they will go to the front of the queue. Any questions you have for me, make sure you put a queue at the start of it so I'm aware that you're asking me a question and I'll, of course, star it and then we can go through some of your thoughts and interactive um, comments throughout the stream big up to all of you that are here nice and early i really appreciate that uh big up to afsa absolute legend thank you so much for being here big up to corrupted big up to luke big up to tammy great to see you at the weekend as well tammy uh and big up to redemption make sure you get your questions in with a queue at the start so i'm aware of what you want to ask me now this is going to be an unbelievable game tonight for the pure fact that it means so much. There's so much riding on the game tonight. The Champions League is a competition that we want to stay in. It's one that we want to remain in. It's one we want to win. And we have to win tonight to do that. And but we're going to have to either win in full time, extra time, penalties. Do you know what? I do not care, but I want to go through. Um, that's for sure. It doesn't really bother me how we win. It would be lovely to be comfortable. And I think it's going to be comfortable tonight, not at the Allianz. We saw the opportunity for Arsenal in that first leg for it to be really, um, really take advantage, I suppose, is the word to use in terms of them not having their away fans there. We weren't able to do that. They actually managed to get a couple of goals, which was quite surprising for some people. I actually thought it'd be a very, very tough, tight game. And I actually went for a one nil to the Arsenal because I felt that there was an opportunity for us to just nick it. Um, but we conceded. Um, defensively, we've been so good this season, particularly in 2024. Best defensive record. Fantastic when it comes to our goal difference, which, of course, helps when you score, but also when you uh, don't concede. But it weren't great and hasn't been great for the last couple of games. And that's been a disappointment for me. Um, I honestly believe there's a real disappointment amongst Arsenal fans because of how poor we've been let down by something that's been so stable and effective in the last few months. And I honestly feel as well that there's a real disappointment from some of the individuals. I can see in the chat some of the names that are being spoken about, which we are going to mention. Um, I'm not going to mention Sunday. I'm just going to mention tonight. But of course, you look back to that game and then that kind of drops the level of confidence going into this game tonight now. I don't think we should be down and out. I don't think we should be doom and gloom. I think a lot of people believe that after a defeat, probably what's going to happen is the confidence is going to be knocked. What doesn't help is that Arsenal do genuinely tend to lose in clusters. And because this is a one-off, it doesn't look good for tonight. However, let's not worry about what normally happens. Let's not worry about what we think will happen. Let's worry about Arsenal taking the game to Bayern Munich and making sure that we get through it. And how we're going to do that is going to be very, very different um, to what people might uh, believe Aston Villa was going to be a threat for. So we can't sit there and be too down about that game going into this one. We have to look forward to it and say that it's a different game. Um, so we have to get uh, behind it, behind the team. Um, I'm really interested to see the team line up tonight. I really am. And that's where I'm going to start because I think most Arsenal fans look at the team news and either feel excited or deflated. 
not deflated as such as oh my god look at the state of the team but deflated as ah oh, i didn't want to see x y or z start or i didn't want to go with that system or that setup or that formation and there's a lot of people um that will look at a team news in different light and say this is what i would have gone with or this is what i wouldn't have gone with but I think that for me is really key going into the game. And I always do that at the Emirates. I look at the team news and I get right. What am I feeling about that team? And I don't know if you guys do that before a game. Do you get that feel? Do you get that? Or do you just not care what the 11 is? Go out and do it. Because everyone's different. For me, I look at it and I think, yeah, like let's look at that team and be up for it and really get behind the boys because that's what we want. We need that feel. We need that lift. We need that energy lift. And the fans will need to do their job tonight because it's going to be difficult. We had the advantage of them not having any away fans at our ground. And unfortunately, the result means that we didn't take advantage of it. We have to be loud tonight. It's going to be hostile. It's going to be volatile. It's a difficult place to go. They now 100% will be up for it. Why will they be up for it? Well, the reason they'll be up for it is because they only have that competition. There is nothing else that they have. Um, the German Cup they're out of. The league is now done, and congratulations to Bayer Leverkusen and to Granit Xhaka, it has to be said, and Xabi Alonso. But that now makes it harder for us because it's literally their season could be over tonight. Arsenal's season, could it be over tonight if we lose? Um, no, but certainly we'll feel like it to some Arsenal fans who believe the title is over already. Um, I'm not throwing in the towel in the title. I've just got to be honest when I say that I think Manchester City will win the league now. I thought Manchester City were going to. Now I'm even more certain that they're going to. So tonight we need an absolute lift. We need to try and provide some more credit in the bank to some of these players and management that some people have lost a little bit of faith in because of the weekend. Um, I think we have to look at our strengths and we have to look at how we get through this game with the best opportunity for us to go through. Now it's a Champions League game, which means it's completely different to the domestic league. Let me tell you people, the Champions League has absolutely no respect for the domestic leagues. We saw that when Atalanta beat Liverpool 3-0. Yeah, different competition, but it's Europe. Champions League even more so. Who had Dortmund going through last night? Not me. Not me. Yeah, they went to Diego Simeone's Atletico Madrid and over two legs, they dumped them out. PSG, did anyone have them going through the way they're playing? Not me. I understand Barcelona getting 10 minutes made it hard, but I had Barcelona going through. So... Both the teams last night, I didn't expect to go through, went through. Does that mean that the two teams tonight that I don't expect to go through will go through? Um, will Real Madrid beat Manchester City? Will Manchester City beat Real Madrid at home? And will Arsenal get through against Bayern Munich? This is the competition we all love. This is the competition we all want to be in. And I think sometimes when people are looking towards tonight thinking, I'm so nervous, I don't know what to feel, try to enjoy it because this is where we want to be. In this competition, not going out in this round, not going out in the group stage or the last 16 or the quarterfinals. We want to be getting to that final and winning it. And the only way we're going to do that is to concentrate on trying to do our job at every opportunity. And tonight, the opportunity is the Allianz Arena against Bayern Munich. And it's going to be ridiculously difficult. So let's go into what I would do tonight. Last night, you would have heard on the show, if you watched it with myself, Annie Gal, Kenny Northside and Brandon, please go and make sure you check that out. There's a clip that's just been put out of Northside and Gal just going at it, um, arguing as they always do. Make sure you check that one out. Tonight, the team news is vital for me. It really is. And this is what I would do. I want to see this team and I feel like it's going to be close to what I expect as well. David Rea will be in goal. I think Ben White at right back will remain alongside Saliba and Gabriel, who will form that partnership. At left back, there is a question mark. Do we play Zinchenko? Not for me. Um, his performance against Aston Villa was really poor. Defensively, we need to be good tonight. Sane, I believe, is going to play. I know a lot of people thought he was unfit, but I think he's fit and I think he's going to play. So that means we need to be wary of that. And Zinchenko, I think, would get skinned. Kivior hasn't played in the last few games much and actually did get skinned himself against Sane. So for me, and my left back tonight has to be Tomiyasu. Tomiyasu one-on-one -on -one defensively is very good. And it doesn't really bother me if it's um, Ben White inverting, if he wants an inverted 
fullback still because he can do it. And he's proven when he's done it, we've actually looked very, very good. And I would say and argue that actually with Kivior at left back and Ben White inverting at right back, we've looked a lot better. But tonight I'd go for Tommy Yasu at left back. I really would. And I think personally we'll see aerial threat from Tommy Yasu, which is very, very important. Versatility, discipline. And good one-on-one -on -one defending, man. And, you know, Mo was on the stream, was it last week, telling me he doesn't rate Tommy Asu. He thinks he's just a squad player at best. I kind of disagree and agree with that statement. I disagree because I rate Tommy Asu, but I agree that he's a squad player. And that's what you need in this team, right? If you're going to have a squad player like Tommy Asu that's going to come in for games like this and play a 7 or 8 out of 10 every game, job done, man. That's what I want to see. And I think Tommy Yasu here up against Leroy Sane, although I believe it will be a very difficult task for him, I want to see him put in a performance like he did at the Emirates against Liverpool when Salah was there because he absolutely bossed him. And that's the sort of performance I want. Tommy Yasu come on against uh, Bayern Munich the other night and actually we looked pretty good in my opinion. I know he came on against Villa and probably was one of the best that we saw. But um, I think Tommy Yasu can do a job. I really do. So I'm a fan. I always have been. It's just his injury record with Tommy Asu. That's literally all it is. Um, so, yeah, he came on against Aston Villa and I thought he was good. So, I pray. Tommy Asu starts tonight, not Zinchenko or Kivio. That has to be. So, that's my back five, right? Raya White, Saliba, Gabriel and Tommy Asu. Then we come to the midfield and we've got a couple of doubts. We've got a couple of options. Um, the one person that is going to play is Declan Rice. This midfield has to be spot on. I do not want to be seeing Kai Havertz in this midfield. That cannot happen. So it's really going to have to be Jorginho or Party. Now, Jorginho for me is probably the one I would go for. Away from home, I think we need it for a little bit of um, balance and tempo in the midfield. And I think he does that well. Thomas Party, although I like him, I would have played him against Villa and seen how fit he was. And because that didn't happen, I just can only feel like he's not going to play tonight because we just haven't seen enough of him. And I think to chuck him in after a few minutes here and there would be a massive risk for Mikel Arteta. And it's not something that I believe we should be doing if he's not 100% fit. If Party is fit, he plays. Because not only if he's one of the best midfielders in the Premier League, he's one of the best players Arsenal have got when fully fit. And I think people forget, because he hasn't played for so long, how important it is for the tempo, how important it is for transition from midfield to attack, and how important it is for his physical attributes. So if he plays, that means he's fit, and I would start him. But I don't think he is fit 100% yet. I don't think he'll be dumped into this game starting. So I think it's going to be Jorginho. Declan Rice, he's looked knackered the last couple of games. He hasn't looked himself. Big game needed from him tonight. Big game needed. I would start him in the eight and then in the number 10 role or the attacking eight role, Martin Erdegaard. Now, he came off against Villa because he felt something and there's doubts over him with a late fitness test. But I think he'll be fine. I think he will. And I think that's why he came off at the weekend. And do you know what was frustrating was when he came off, we were really poor. We had absolutely no cover for him. So if he isn't fit tonight, that's going to be a massive issue. It will have to be Smith Rowe or it will have to play Kai Havertz in that role there. But Fabio Vieira ain't playing enough football, ain't seen enough of him. Don't know where he's gone, by the way. No idea. He just doesn't seem to fancy him at the moment. But I think Erdegaard will play and I think he'll captain us. Um, and I pray that he does. So there's my midfield three. Party, if he's fit, play him. He's not going to be, in my opinion. So Jorginho starts. Rice in the eight. And then it has to be Martin Erdegaard. Kai Havertz can't play in that midfield. But then my front three is probably one of the most spoken about front threes in a while because most of the time, when everyone's fit, it's Jesus, Saka and Martinelli. But I actually would stick with Havertz tonight. I'd play him back up top where he's been scoring goals and assists. We dropped him into midfield at the weekend. God knows why. Heaven knows why. I don't understand what that decision was all about because it hasn't worked for a long time. There. Back in the early part of the season, he was playing there all the time and it just wasn't right. It wasn't working. Not for me, right? 
But tonight he has to remain as the number nine. Jesus and Trossard, I think, should be used as subs. So therefore, I'm using Saka and Martinelli either side. Now, let's talk a little bit about that front three. What Kai Havertz brings is a target man option. What Kai Havertz also brings is a little bit of work rate. And he also brings some physical presence and attributes that probably in the terms of like me growing up playing football was isn't afraid to get stuck in and afraid to put a foot in. I think we're going to need that tonight, which is why I would start Kai. The other thing with Kai Havertz is that he's actually been playing well in that position. Right. But also what it does is it allows for a couple of outlets when you link him. So Saka and Martinelli can be them outlets. Saka, late fitness test, hasn't been fit for a while, keeps playing him. But I would tonight because it's a massive game and you need that sort of player. And I'm looking at him and Erdegaard and Rice to actually put in the performances when it matters because this is what these moments are about. This is why you have these top players. This is why people call them on the brink of world class because they're needed in these positions, right? That's what's needed. So when I look at people who say, yeah, Saka, he's top quality, he's on it. He needs to prove it in these games. Now, he got a lot of stick in the last game and I gave him stick for what he did at the end. I thought that was really poor from him and I stand by that. I've watched that many a time and you can say it's 50-50 about it. But for me, he has to go for goal. But he did score in that game. And people say he doesn't turn up in big games. Well, he did score in that game. And people who say he doesn't score in big games, nonsense. He scored against Man City. He scored against United, Liverpool, Spurs. He scored goals against... Um, Chelsea scored goals against our, our biggest rivals. He has been there or thereabouts, right? He's been scoring goals. So he does. He does turn up. But tonight he's really got it. It's away from home. It's going to be hostile. It's going to be volatile. Eyes are on him. Eyes are on Rice. Eyes are on Erdegaard. Eyes are on Saliba and Gabriel. These are all players that Arsenal fans have picked up, rightly so. they got to turn up tonight. They've got to get into them. They've got to have the proper... Um, They've got to have the proper um, cojones, as Troy Deeney used to call it, for me. Um, I'm not going to dig people out in the chat. I'm just going to get rid of people, man, because they frustrate the hell out of me. Um, so, listen, I will say there is a great opportunity for us to um, have some options tonight. A lot of people are saying to me in my WhatsApp groups, play Trossard because he's our best finisher and Martinelli hasn't been with it. And that's where I want to start. This left-hand side, it's a worry. I'm going to put it out there. It's a worry. And it's not a worry because we've finally lost one game in 2024. It's been a worry all season. Let me take you back throughout this season. We haven't really had a left-back, right? We haven't really had a left-back. Timber, I think, was going to be that guy. But unfortunately, he's been injured for the majority of this season. Then you have Zinchenko, who's played there defensively not it but can invert then you've had Kivior there who's been good but he's really a centre-back but has allowed when he's played there Ben White to invert and it did us really good moving forward Tommy Yasu can play there he's right back centre-back or left back very versatile and I've spoken earlier about his attributes that I quite like but there isn't a standout left back maybe there will be next season when Timbers fit or maybe we'll look at it differently in the summer and say that there might be an option to actually buy another one. Who knows? But that's a problem. The left centre midfield area is also a problem. Because other than Gabriel, our whole left side has chopped and changed. The right side, however, we know it's Saliba and White, and we know it's Saka and Erdegaard. But on the left, Gabriel's the only one who's consistently playing. There's a different left back most games. At left centre mid, we've seen Rice play there, but we've also seen Havertz play there. We've seen Fabio Vieira and Smith Rowe also play there at times. And at left wing, although I thought Martinelli had held his position down due to injury and not being able to have a bit of a, a breakout season, um, a, a, a broken up season, sorry, Trossard's played there a few times. I've seen Jesus play there as well. Um, and Smith Rowe and Nelson have both got on in those positions as well. Now, don't get me wrong. You need a squad and you need to rotate. So you need options in each of those positions, right? But in terms of holding down a position, Martinelli has actually struggled this season. Declan Rice has struggled to play in that number eight for all of the season because Havertz was there for a while, particularly in the first build-up to the first few months of the season. And at left-back, we've had few options. That needs to change because I need to see some stability and some sustainability as well. So I don't know 
that each of those positions are in Mikel Arteta's head right now as the ones that he believes in totally. I think there's definitely fours and against Zinchenko, Tomiyasu and Kivior. And then there's definitely times where you need Martinelli and you need Jesus or Trossard there. But I will say this, Trossard is definitely a super sub. I don't really like Trossard starting, unless, funny enough, it's in the nine, because I think he's better there. And I think that's a better position for him, because I think he's our best finisher. So there's opportunities for Trossard for sure, but I think he's more of a super sub. But Gabriel Jesus is the one that I want to mention before we come back to Martinelli. Gabriel Jesus has definitely been wasteful, but I absolutely love him as a footballer. He's silky, he's smooth, he's great to watch, his press is phenomenal, brings people into games, definitely can play wide, and I think we should play him wide right a lot more and wide left a lot more. But he's basically doing what he's doing at City now, where City are like, you're not really a nine, we're going to play you more on the wing, we're going to bring you up and give you 20 minutes, 30 minutes, half hour here and there. That's what we're now doing with him, and we're only a year into it. So that's probably the biggest compliment I can pay Arsenal and Arteta is that we've got into a situation only 12 months on after signing Zinchenko and Jesus, where both of them at the moment aren't able to get into our first team. And I'm I'm here for it. I think it's a good thing. I still do need a centre forward to upgrade on Jesus. And I do think that the left back should either be bought or use Timber or Tomiyasu there ahead of Zinchenko. So that's where I'm at there. Now let's talk about Martinelli. I think this left-hand side is actually effective because when Granite Chaka was playing in that left eight, he was getting threaded balls through all day long and he scored 15 goals last season. People forget that. People didn't really mention the fact that he was our top goal scorer. There was Saka and Erdegaard mentioned all the time, rightly so. Granit Xhaka got his mention. Thomas Partey got his mention. And Saliba and Gabriel got their mentions. Jesus got more of a mention last season than Martinelli and he only had 10 goals because he was out for a while. I honestly believe when you look at what we have got um, in Gabriel Martinelli, it's absolute potential to be a ridiculously good player. We haven't seen it enough this season. I think that's fair to say. We just haven't. We haven't seen it enough. But I hope we do. And I've got confidence tonight that if we do play him and start him, that he could be the outlet that we need him to be. Unfortunately, there was a scenario which I had in my head against Man City that we could try to get that nicket type game. And it almost came to us. Unfortunately, Martinelli and Trossard, for the first time in Arteta's reign, were opposite sides and Martinelli was right and Trossard was left and if you remember we just needed Trossard to cross it first time to Martinelli and he was in now if that's Martinelli and that opportunity arises he doesn't need to cross it because he's got the pace to run at goal so that's what I'm hoping for tonight that there's opportunities to get in behind Kimmich who's a very good player by the way a very very good player but that's why I would start Gabriel Martinelli tonight you can bring Trossard on. You can bring Jesus on. Hell, you might want to bring Thomas Partey on if you believe he's fit enough, of course. But that's why I would start with that 11. As for Bayern Munich, they've got some injury problems. Serge Gnabry is out. Kingsley Coleman is out. Alfonso Davis is out. But I was speaking to a few Arsenal fans that have been speaking to Bayern fans, and apparently Bayern fans are quite happy that Alfonso Davis is injured because since his links with Real Madrid, he's not been the same. He's dropped and dipped in his form. So Guerrero coming in is actually going to be something that the Bayern Munich fans would be happy about because they believe he's been more of a solid left back and actually offensively is quite underrated as well. So I think the performance of Saka tonight will be very, very interesting up against him. Martinelli, unfortunately, in the last week game, the Emirates kind of ghosted and was just sort of in the pocket of Kimmich, really. I think Kimmich was outstanding and showed his experience. Nabry being out is a good thing. He scored against us last week and he's an ex-Gooner, so he knows that what this game means. Um, Coleman is a very good player and could have actually won the game, if you believe. If you remember last week, he actually hit the post when he came on. Sane, unbelievable player. Going to cause problems tonight against whoever we play. We've mentioned that, right? Got a couple of options, apparently, but Musiala is going to be fit. Very good player. Kane's going to be fit. He'll probably get a goal, like we always all know and mention whenever we play Harry Kane. But the two players that really shone last week were Lema and Goretzka. They were the two players that I looked at and I thought, yeah, you got control of that midfield well. We need to stop that tonight. And Jorginho and Rice need not to get swallowed up. They need good games, if it is Jorginho and Rice, which I believe it should be. Odegaard needs to be able to get in the game. But at the same time, um, Rice and Jorginho need to dominate and boss that midfield. 
Jorginho's got the experience. Rice has got the muscle and the fight and passion and desire. And he can have that drive forward. He's a good ball carrier, Rice. Very, very good ball carrier. And I expect to see him tonight doing well. Um, but that's the Bayern Munich side. They're probably going to have Eric Dyer at the back. We can get at him. And trust me, we need to get at him more than we did last week. They've got an aging goalkeeper who's elite and, and, and still top quality, in my opinion, and has been elite for the last decade. But we really need to turn it on tonight. We really do. Now, I don't think it's going to be a very easy game. I don't think there's going to be loads of goals in this one. I didn't think there'd be loads of goals in the last one, but I was wrong. So maybe I'm wrong tonight. But I do think this one will be a lot different. Here's what I'm expecting. This is what I want to see. I want to see a real defensive masterclass display from Arsenal again. I want Mikel Arteta to put in a team performance tactically, defensively, like the one at the Etihad, like the one a few years ago at Anfield. And I would love nothing more than to see a Gabriel Saliba header from a set piece to win the game 1-0. And that is what I'm going for. I'm going 1-0 to the Arsenal old school. And I'm going to go through the tie. Let's go for it, man. Let's go for it. Let's be positive. I'm not going to say we're going to win 3-0. I'm not even going to say we're going to win 2-0 or 2-1. I think it'll be a very, very tight game. Now, people will say, oh, Harry Kane will score, Sane will score, Missyala will set up chances. We'll definitely get a couple of goals too. Saka and Martinelli have just spoken about outlets. Yeah, it could be. It could be, do you know what? Let's just go for it and see what happens. Both teams do. But I think it will actually be a lot closer than people are thinking. But that's just my opinion. Something that we don't need tonight is what Chris mentions. And that is going down to 10 men. For both teams as well, that goal counts for both. Like It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter if Bayern get down to 10 men, but it certainly does if we do, because that, something like that, as you saw last night with Barcelona, can completely kill a game and actually ruin the game, ruin the tie. I always felt that when we played Bayern, we could give away a penalty. Chesney got sent off, I remember, and they scored the penalty. I think it was Robin, and it's like this is going to be four or five. And funny enough, it was. So I don't want something like that to happen again. I really don't. That's the last thing I need. Um, it's going to be close, guys. I've gone for 1-0. It's going to be really close. I hope it's 3-0. I hope it's convincing. I'd love it. But I don't think it will be. So I've gone 1-0 to the Arsenal, man. Defensive masterclass. Mikel Arteta gets it spot on tonight. Let's pray. Let's pray. Um, let's move on quickly to the other game before we take a couple of questions. Get your questions in, guys. Put a cue at the start of it so I know it's a question. We've got a couple that I've started already. Uh, and we'll take some tonight because I'm interested to hear your thoughts in the chat as well. Um, Manchester City, Real Madrid. How do we see that going? Let me know in the chat. What are you going for score-wise? Because um, I'm going 2-1 Man City. I think Man City are going to win this game. I think it's a very, very tough place to go to the Etihad. They haven't lost in Europe for, I think it's like three years at home. Um, I think Martin was saying earlier on the stream with Mo. And they haven't lost at the Etihad in the league since December 2022. I really fancy Man City. I really fancy Man City. Um, it's a team that I respect. But also, it's not an opposition to be disrespected. 14 European Cups, Champions Leagues, whatever you want to call it. The giants of Europe, the kings of Europe, the ones that have been there and done it. Players like Jude Bellingham, Vinny Jr., Rodrigo, that can absolutely annihilate any team in world football. You've got to be careful. But I am going 2-1. <laughs> and I think Man City will win the competition if they get through um, against Real Madrid. Because I think whoever wins that game will actually win the tournament. Hopefully we go through and cause an upset. But we'll have to see. Uh, a few people in the chat here saying 4-3 to Real Madrid. Wow, that would be unbelievable. Um, Foden, Haaland and KDB Jake says 1-0 City a KDB winner Redemption has gone for 2-1 Bayern we've got 2-0 Bayern from Nick Gavin says 2-0 to Madrid uh, Lucas has said 4-3 to Man City G-Dog says 3-2 to Man City James says 3-1 Man City and Redemption says 3-1 Man City oh, Arsenal Maniac has also gone with Man City to win 3-1 so a lot of people believe in it will be 3-1 tonight um, 
I really do believe uh, that Man City are the favourites for it. Uh, let's take this from Kevin. Or Kev won. says, Dan, speak to the Arsenal fans about leaving the stadium early. They need slaps. Let me talk about this. I was at the ground on Sunday and I was stunned. I've been very critical and I've been very um, negative or toxic, as people like to call it. Um, I've given criticism, definitely. But I stayed there till the end. And there's a lot of fans that went, some of which are fans who have said to me, get behind a team, back your players, back your manager. What are you doing then? Because at 88 minutes, you're off, mate. You're going. You're leaving the ground. It emptied. You could see the cannon in the stadium. It was that bad. It's basically like saying, I don't think Manchester City will not win the league now. And then being told, you're throwing the towel in. Well, look around you, man. Everybody seems to be. They've all gone. So I just got to give my honest opinion about it and say that I believe now it's going to be difficult. But everybody else, they've gone through the towel in, man. It's done for them. And that's poor. As a fan base, that's poor. Really, really poor. So we need to be better than that. Tonight, let's go for it, man. Let's go for it. Uh, let's take a few questions. This one comes in from Amir. It says, hi, Dan. How would you set up today? Would you part the bus and counter or just play our usual game? So I've given my 1-11, to 11, which you can go back and watch if you haven't caught up with, right? But in terms of parking the bus, I don't think so. I think being defensively stable and parking the bus are two very different things. Parking the bus to me is like, look, we're not interested in shooting a goal. We just want to keep it tight and put everybody behind the ball. That's not what we're going to do. But I do need to see a defensive masterclass tonight. I really do. Because I don't want to be conceding to players like Harry Kane or Sane or Musiala because they can hurt you. And I think that we can show that we're defensively solid. If we pick the right back line, Tommy Asu, Gabriel Saliba and Ben White for me, um, Zinchenko is the last option at left back for me. If he starts tonight, that will really disappoint me. And I think he would have got the team selection completely wrong there. I really don't want to be seeing that. So that's where I'm at, man. So big up to Amir. Um, this one comes in from Mark. Big up, Mark. He says, if they double up on Saka, do you think Arteta should change things up? For example, allow Saka and Martinelli to keep swapping sides to break the predictability. This is something, bro, I don't know why we don't do enough. I don't know why we don't allow Martinelli and Saka to switch. And when Trossard's playing, Jesus is playing, switch it. They can all play across the front three. They can definitely, Saka and Martinelli, play either side. And I think we should switch that up. When they put two players on Saka, sometimes it is for Saka to try and look at, but also it's for Arteta to try and shift it across. And I would love nothing more than to see us be a little bit more unpredictable up top across the front three. I honestly do believe that. So, yeah. Uh, where are we next? Let's take a look at this from Hendon Guna, who says, do you think that Arteta will risk playing Timber tonight? He's back in full training and trained with the squad yesterday. Um, no, I just don't see that happening, man. Um, you can't throw him in the deep end in a big game like this. What I will say, though, is I've always been the same uh, on this. I think he'll play parts of, the, of, of this season. I don't think we're going to see him starting every single game, but I think he will be part of the squads that we see because he's a top quality player and he needs minutes. He's been playing in the under-23s from what I'm I'm aware of, um, getting himself fit. Mikel Arteta made comments about Timber saying that it's just about his fitness now. It's just about getting him fit. It's just about having a chat with how he's feeling. So I think we're going to see Timber definitely, but not tonight. Not tonight, that's for sure. Uh, where are we at next? Get some more questions in, guys, before we do come to a close. This one's from Zinchenko, uh, from Arsenal Maniac. Zinchenko gets bamboozled. He's unaware of his surroundings and constantly gets caught out, always leaves big holes as well. Yeah, this is my thing with Zinchenko. There's two things to this story. Yes, Arteta asked him to play that way. He asked him to invert. He asks him to be a part of the midfield. He also asks him to not really... Um, have like a free role, I suppose, is the way. I mean, he was at right back the other day when we conceded the goal, which was poor, right? So, yeah, that's that. But actually, when you look at it, the guy did he dabbles on the ball, right? And loses it. And I've seen Zinchenko at Fulham at home this season on the ball, dilly daddle, lose it. They win a corner. Fulham have got 10 men and they get an equaliser. I've seen, although he won this game, Zinchenko, Wolves at home, mucking around on the ball, gives it to them, they score. Frustrating. 
And this is the problem. It's okay to say he can't defend. He can't. It's actually quite cringeworthy watching him trying to defend. But then I look back and I think, yeah, the system don't actually suit him. But he's dilly-dallying on the ball. Well, that's fair. That's unfair, actually. The system does suit him. It doesn't suit Arsenal, I don't think. Unless we're attacking. Unless we're on the ball and we're on the on the attack and we're looking offensive, we've got to go for it. Because at Burnley at home this season, he was good. But other than that, I'm struggling to think of a great game that he had, Zinchenko. So that's where I'm at with him, man. Uh, where are we at here? This one comes in from Nick. Says, can you see us raising our game for the rest of the season if we go out to buy him? Not got no choice not to, bro. Got no choice not to. We have to. We have to keep this going, man. This isn't now, oh, because we lost to Villa, not really sure we can really concentrate on the league too much. Let's just concentrate on buying. Oh, we've gone out of that as well. This is going to be hard now. I, I can't really see us. None of that crap. Every single game needs to be a win. Needs to be. So big up to Nick. Uh, this super chat comes in, so that's going to jump the queue. Uh, straight at the front of the queue if you want to put in a super chat. Uh, EFF94 says, agreed. Never fully rated our setup, but our first loss of 2024, even if we've lost 4 nil like we should have done, at least stay in boo at full time. Fans who left. Um, at least stay, at least stay and boo at full time. Okay, with you. Um, listen, I, I don't really do the whole booing thing. If people want to boo and express their disgust, that's up to them. But staying to the end is something I believe that we have to do. Now, if we would have been like 7 0, 8 0, people probably want to go get the trains. But this was a Sunday afternoon, like early evening. Um, so there's not that. Um, yeah, let's be real. It was poor, bro. Really, really poor. Um, we don't need that reaction tonight. We need to get behind it and, and go all out because this is going to be a massive, massive game. How are we doing for likes? There's, uh, what we got? Three, nearly 400 people in the chat, which is amazing. We've only just got to over 100 likes. Make sure you do me a favor and hit that like button now. It's free, people. I cannot stress that enough. Please, I beg you, hit the like. That's all I ask. Yeah, it's free. And hit subscribe while you're there. Two buttons. Like, subscribe, and it's done. That's all you need to do, man. And if we can get that with 400 people, that means we should get towards 400 likes and 400 new subscribers, if, of course, you're not subscribed already. So please make sure you do it and let us know that you've done it in the chat. Um, really does make a difference, people. So, yeah, we go. You're all listening to me. Brilliant. Seeing the likes going up. Keep hitting that like button, people. That's all I ask from you. Um, new member... Snake Eyes, big up. If you do want to be a member, then you hit a like, you hit a subscribe, and you hit join, and you can be. Um, so make sure that you do that, please, people. That would be amazing. Uh, Snake Eyes is coming with the chat saying, long time listener, and Dan, you're one of the few fans that talk sense. Well, listen, thank you very much, my bro. I do appreciate that. Not everybody would agree with you, trust me, but um, I do really appreciate that, man. Thank you so much, and I'm glad that you do relate. Uh, Richard as well, big up, a member of the channel says, not a question, but I just want to say thank you, Dan. I love your content. Big up to you, my friend. Thank you so, so much, Rich. And I know you've been a member for a while. So thank you so much, man. It means a lot. And I really do appreciate the love. So thank you so much. Um, this one come Here we go. I thought he'd be here soon. I thought he would be here soon. Do me a favor, people. Big up to Ronnie. Ronnie's a Spurs fan. And Ronnie wants us out uh tonight ronnie's a spurs fan who thinks that harry kane will score two goals against us tonight and Bayern munich will beat us two nil i hope that ronnie is very very wrong but big up to you my bro and thanks for supporting the channel as always mate i do appreciate it and i'm sure that me and lee will see you on his channel as well uh so big up to you mate uh who's the next question in the house is from ash booth ash says big up dan would you start party tonight now i did mention this earlier and i will repeat it now if you do want to go back and rewind people, if you're catching up, then I have put my 11 out already earlier on the show. The reason I wouldn't is because I don't think he's fit enough. Now, if the fitness coaches and staff are saying he is, I 100% would start him tonight because he's such an important player for us. We haven't been able to see him all season. It's been actually quite bad considering last season people said he was injury prone. Well, this season he's been even more so, right? And if it wasn't for the Declan Rice signing, we really would have missed him even more. I would play Jorginho tonight if Party's not fit. But if he is fit, I would start him. And that's my honest opinion, Ash, because I think he's better in transition. I think he's got more physical attributes. I definitely think he's an all-round better player than Jorginho. But I think Jorginho will get the nod tonight, man. So that's my honest opinion. Uh, so big up to you, Ash. 
where are we? This one comes in from Bain Edits, who says, do you think we should use Jesus as the right wing backup for Saka until we find a proper backup? Absolutely, I do. And I've spoken to LB and some of the City fans about this, who said, Jesus is a better winger. Use him to rotate with Saka. And when he played there against Manchester City at home, he was phenomenal. He was absolutely brilliant. So, like, for me, I honestly believe it's an option. Jorginho played, Saka was injured. If you remember, they both played really, really well. And Jesus was great on the right-hand side. And it was one of my favourite performances in an Arsenal shirt from him. He didn't score, he didn't assist, he wasn't outstanding in terms of, wow, he's the reason we won the game. But his performance was really good. His press is great. I love the fact that he can chase back. I love the fact that his um, work rate and tenacity is there. He's a very silky player. In the Champions League, he's done it for Arsenal. Let's hope he does it again tonight, man. Let's really, let's really open and pray that he does. Last few questions before we come to a close. This one comes in from Andy. He says, do you think if Saka doesn't improve with being more diverse on the ball, we will outgrow him from our side? He's just so predictable all the time. I think he gets a lot of harsh criticism, and I'll tell you why I think he does. The reason he gets a lot of harsh criticism is because some of the Arsenal fan base tell everybody else that he's elite and world-class. Bukayo Saka isn't world-class, but he can be world-class. And the problem you've got now is when you mention those two words, world and class, everybody's going to look at his performance with a magnifying glass and go, weren't tonight, weren't tonight, limping off again, another poor game. <clears throat> Actually, let's just leave the kid alone. He's 22 and he's growing into his game. That's the way I see it. So when everybody is saying, this guy's better than Saka, this guy's better than Saka, clearly Saka's the benchmark. So let's hope he has a good game tonight, man. Let's pray. Um, Paul says, Dan, I'm a Spurs supporter. Fair weather fans are mad to me. We spent 20 years to Eclipse Winger. Guess I'm too old for the internet. Paul, big up, man. And thanks for the support. I really appreciate the love, man. And thanks for coming and supporting the channel. I know it's never easy supporting uh, your, your rivals' content, but I really appreciate that, man. And uh, I hope that Spurs can do us a favour against Liverpool and City in the league. Could we, could we imagine? Could we imagine? Uh, but big up to you, Paul. I hope you're well. This one's the super chat, so it goes to the front of the queue. This is from Sam, who says, I was at the game and I stayed to the end because I never leave early. But if some other fans decide to leave early, it's none of anyone else's business. So I totally agree with this. You can support the club how you want. If you're frustrated and you want to leave the club early, that's fine. But it just doesn't look very good, in my opinion, because it looks like you're throwing a towel in and, you know what, see you later. It's done. Um, that's the way that we uh, we are. But Sam, next time you're at the game, bro, drop me a DM and we'll meet up for a beer, man. You've been a massive supporter of the channel. So big up yourself, man. We'll definitely meet up. And uh, thanks for the super chat, my bro. I really do appreciate that. That means a lot. Um, OK, where are we at now? We've got a last few before we close. Uh, Sahil says, this season, what what is a good season? It's getting close to the league. Good enough. Um, Listen, a successful season is doing that at the end of the season, right? If you can't do that, you've got to get very, very close. And there has to be context as to why we haven't won trophies this season. And I'm just going to leave it at that because a lot of people will then start to ask questions about whether Mikel Arteta should go or not. And I'm really not interested in talking about that, if I'm honest, because tonight we've got a massive game um, and he is going to be staying here for the, till the end of the season, for sure, till next season. Uh, Ian Devaz, big up, bro, says, Dan, even if party isn't fit, why not start him and take him off after 50 minutes? I think you'll probably find that it'll be the opposite, bro, and that he'll actually bring him on, potentially. So I don't think you'll start him. I think it'll be Jorginho. And then if he does come on, it will give him a few minutes there. Just I just feel like he needs more minutes. I haven't seen enough of him yet. And I was surprised that he didn't start against Villa or come on against Villa, to be fair. So that one is the reason why. Um, EFF94, big up yourself. Thanks for the super chat earlier. You're back again. Says, um, how many points do you think will be enough to win the league? And do you think we'll do it? Um, I thought all top three would win their last seven, but us and Liverpool both dropped uh, points already. Laugh out loud. Yeah, listen, we have. We've completely um, dropped, uh, haven't we, this season, this, this weekend, both Liverpool and Arsenal. I don't think 90 points will actually get to the stage. I don't think someone will hit 90 points. Uh, actually, do I? Let me check. What are Manchester City on right now? Because I think they'll win their, their last game, if you, uh, their last six games. So, yeah, I think it will be 91 points that Man City will get. And it might be 89, and that will be enough. I, I think if anyone gets close to that 90 points, mark, it's done. Like, let's be real. Um, so that's where I'm at. This one comes in from Nick, says, does Jorginho's lack of mobility against a strong Bayern midfield concern you, Dan? It actually did last week because I feel like our midfield got really overbossed and dominated, but it doesn't this time. And that sounds mad saying that because it's the same team. 
But I feel like if party's not fit, we're going to need somebody like Jorginho to try and get on the ball and balance it out a bit. And I just hope that he can do that tonight. I don't think it's the lack of quality from Jorginho. I just think that Lima and, um, and uh, what's his name, Goretzka, was so good last week. I'm hoping they don't be as good this week tonight. Uh, this one comes in lastly from Alan Bennett, who says, how many limps do you think Saka will do tonight? Um, listen, there's a lot of people talking about this, that every time that he has a bad game, he limps around the field. Um, the guy gets kicked. That is literally it. He's not limping because he thinks there's a bad game. He's limping because he's got a knock or because someone's kicked him or because he's got a dead leg. That's what happens, man. That's what happens. So this is where I'm at. Arsenal tonight, forget about the weekend, forget about the Premier League form, forget about whether Saka's world-class or better than Foden or Palmer. Let's concentrate on tonight. Let's get make sure the Arsenal Football Club do all they can to allow our fan base to walk off that pitch proud. And the way we're going to do that is by going through. And I need to see that happening. I'm sticking with 1-0 to the Arsenal old school. Yes, it will be hard to keep a clean sheet against Kane, Musiara and Sane, but I'm going to believe that these boys have got what it takes. So that's what I'm going to be going for. Make sure you do me a favour, people. Make sure you like what we are at the moment. There's over 400 people. There must be 200 likes now. Oh, we're getting close. We need to get to 250, please, before we finish. So please make sure you do is hit like and subscribe right now. Do it right now. And let me know in the chat once you've done it. Um, make sure you click on Surfshark VPN because they're going to be really interested in hearing from you. Make sure you get your VPN from them as well. And before we go, we've got a super chat that's literally just come in now. So I'm going to do that to end the show. Abdullah says, big up, Dan. I always agree with everything you've been saying about our club, Arsenal. You absolutely speak my mind and my starting 11. Bro, much love. Thank you so much. That is such a nice super chat to get, man. I always love the uh, the comments that um, are positive for the channel and that say thank you for what we do because this is all free content for yourself, but it is hard work. And I do appreciate when people come in with comments like this because it really does mean the world that people can relate to what I'm saying. I don't want everyone to agree with me. That's not what it's about. This is a football debate. It shows its panellists. I've got to say that I really, really do appreciate everybody being here. There's well over 400 of you listening. It's absolutely insane. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it all. If you could hit a like for me, that would be even better. Big up to Abdullah for the Super Chats. And big up to all of you for Super Chats. And, of course, questions tonight, man. It's really, really been so humbling for me. And, um, yeah, I want to say a huge thank you. And come on, the Arsenal. We need to do this tonight. Come on. Let's um, see you out of here with, of course, the Surfshark VPN with myself and Lee Judges. Make sure you click the link in the description. And come on, you gunners. Yes, judges. Hello, Dan. How are you doing? You're right? you, bro. I'm actually watching the football, mate. This Surfshark VPN is a lifesaver, mate. You can watch the football with a dodgy Wi-Fi, even at the Emirates when you've got a back, big crowd there and everything like that. Watching the football, unbelievable. Easy to set up. Well, it must be if you've done it, mate. Oh, very, very funny. Even abroad, you can like. You can watch all your favourite programs. It's like being at home, mate. And that's exactly what you guys can do too. Click the link in the description for Surfshark VPN. <laughs>